the lesser of two evils has been a farce for at least the last 35 years that I've been alive, right? The lesser of two evils has been a game. But stuff has gotten stupid in the last eight years such that I don't think Ted Cruz versus Hillary Clinton is really a case of the lesser of two evils. It's the, it's the case of Satan versus Satan spawn, right? It, it is you can go completely to a world that we never imagined with somebody like Ted Cruz. And I don't think people <laughs> give him as much credit as he deserves. I'm not playing the fear mongering with Ted Cruz. I'm looking at his record, what he stands for, what he has stood for for a very long time. I don't know if the lesser two evils is necessarily a farce in 2016. It was a farce in every other year leading up to this point. But have you ever seen somebody who is more conservative than Goldwater, who is more religiously zealot, zealot, uh, zealot, He's a more religious zealot than uh, Jerry Falwell, who is, I mean, oh, that's extreme. Politically, he's politically shrewd, almost like Clinton. He's not as shrewd as Clinton, but he's better than anybody else that's running on the right right now. This guy has the capacity, the motivation, and the wherewithal to wage a holy war inside of America. And you really want to tell me that the lesser of two evils is not relevant in 2016. Well, I think that this is where we get into the, the accusation that Bernie supporters are privileged voters, right? Like, in general, I disagree with that, you know, assertion, but when we're talking about, okay, well, we just need to stick to our guns no matter what, and, and you know, we can't vote for any of those people ever because we have to change the system, but I think that there is something to be said when you do have somebody like a Cruz who is running and who could potentially be Either president for the next four years, um, and and possibly making Supreme Court you know appointments for like years. There are really serious, and then and then right. What if he runs for re-election? I mean, it's just all types of stuff. I I don't like my thing with Bernie or Bust is I believe I don't believe in these ideological purity arguments, right? Like. Like I don't, I don't, I disagree with people who tend to be so inflexible in their moral purism that we can't see the possibility to work with anyone else. Okay, fine. You don't like the mother hen, but that doesn't mean that some of her little chickadees aren't like people we could work with as well. Like I said, like, like I understand about the movement itself and listening to Vincent talk. You know, okay, that sounds great. This is wonderful. But I'm not really interested in oaths of fealty, IQ pledges, and oaths and things like that. Like personally, I don't. Because that's part of me being independent, right? Like, I am able to go as I see. I do agree with what Nick is saying, though, about we need to have strong coalitions to work on several sets of issues. But at the same time, I'm not going to chant certain things with somebody like a Ted Cruz. But then at the same time, I'm also not willing to do what needs to be done to make sure that Hillary Clinton would beat him. So I personally find myself in more of a conundrum, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. This, just, this is a crappy time to be a voter like me who, I'm not going to suck it up and take one for the Dem team. I'm tired of hearing that, but at the same time, I'm going to let this group over here tell me that I have to come to this pledge and do this yeah. thing. Which is not necessarily what anyone's saying, but at the same time, it's very complicated. And I think that's what I really just want more people to acknowledge and realize that voting, it's not just like, oh, well, they're bad and we're good and we just need to vote for, for the good guy for our team. And it's like, no. All of the stuff that has happened in this primary, I don't really, I can't just hold my nose and go vote for Hillary Clinton. Like I just can't do that. I can't vote for a third Bill Clinton term. Like I just can't do that. Like and everybody can say, well, she, no, I'm not voting to put two Clinton to put Clinton no. and Clinton back in the White House. Like I'm not doing that. Here, here's what's so funny about what you just said. Like that, you had a dialectic in your brain just in the last. 30, 60 seconds that you've been talking, right? You argue two sides of something and you're trying to bring some resolution to it. And that's what I go through every single day when I think about could I possibly put a check by the name of Hillary Clinton? And and it is so much more complicated than, an, in my opinion, an overly simplistic, 
rah rah sis um, bye, go for our team vote blue unite blue no kiss my ass go to hell over there and it's it's so much <laughs> more complicated than and oh if you're not bernie or bust then you're not a real real revolutionary kiss my other ass cheek and go over there right it's so much more complicated than that for me it doesn't have to be that complicated for you it can be simple for you it's not right. Because there's a lot at stake for a lot of people, and I am in a very privileged position where it really doesn't matter who's going to be president for me. It matters who's going to be president for someone who's LGBTQ, for people who are impoverished and actually need economic reform to change their lives. It's well, going to matter it matters people. to me. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to matter to people who are brown uh, across the it's internationally. It's really going to matter for them. Probably more than it's going to matter for Americans, to be honest with you. So there's a lot of people who may not be directly connected to me that are depending on my vote. And so I can't just take a overly simplistic view of what I'm going to do when I hit that voting booth because, to me, it's not that simple of a choice that I can just sign up for the Team Blue and go with Team Blue or sign up for a pledge and say to hell with all of you. I don't know. I'm, I'm making up my mind as I go. Go ahead, Anoa. Yeah, no, like I agree. I was just say it matters to me because the tech Ted Cruz hates federal government employees. We saw oh, yeah. that with the so, so. <laughs> so now, Ted, so now, now that, you're getting pulled back. Actually, that would actually kind of cause me like an existential crisis, right? Come election day. Yeah. But again, I'm in Georgia, conservative, conservative red state. Yeah. She's not winning the South. Let's just be not real. No but, 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 but I understand, though, but I do appreciate this notion that we do have these issues, regardless of who is president, regardless of what's going on. We do have these issues like the, you know, trade trifecta, which Nick shared an awesome video, which we need to share again. Um, he shared in the chat the other day a great video about what is at stake, not with just the TPP. But with the other ones that Nick has mentioned as well, like there are these issues that we do need to have this movement of people coalescing around. And I do like, though, that you did ask Nick about um, why go make another third party, right, when the Green Party already exists. I mean, there are a lot of different parties on the left, and it's just kind of like, <laughs> okay, let's go make a new party. I mean, we did have a coffee party for a while. Like, that didn't really seem to – I mean, I, I – well, I mean, I think we have all these really lofty ideas, but 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 instead of looking at what is it that is the issue in terms of party politics in America and trying to figure out how do we then work with that, you know, we want to go run off and create new things. Like Nick and I, Nick and I probably just need to schedule a debate about this. But Nick and I keep going back and forth internally about the Green Party and whether the Green Party is a viable option, right? Yeah. And I. Right, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish that thought. Ahead. I was just going to say that I think that that is a conversation, though, that we should be happening as a part of all this other dialogue going on. You know, Jill Stein jumps on all the different Bernie hashtags and tweets and stuff, but but is there a viable option for us within the Greens? You know, I mean, I think that's a very valid conversation and point that Nick has brought up several times as well. So, Nick, me and you are going to have to figure out. <laughs> Let me let me pull something up and then Nick, I'll throw it to you because I'm sure you got uh, um, uh, Dr. Q mentioned that it's it's hilarious that I'm arguing with you over you're a liberal living in Texas and you have had to deal with Ted Cruz <laughs> than I have ever had to deal with Ted Cruz. It's just hilarious that I'm trying to convince you that Ted Cruz is the devil. Like if there's ever been a devil in American politics, it's Ted fucking Cruz, and we cannot let him get off. 